What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk about some of the new functions contained in Placemaker version 2.1. They rolled out a pretty cool update and I wanted to talk a little bit about it. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so to start off I want to note that Placemaker is a paid extension. So it's a great extension for bringing buildings and creating cities inside your SketchUp models. If you're looking for more information on Placemaker, you can check that out at the sketchup essentials.com slash placemaker please note that that is an affiliate link so a lot of you know I've talked about placemaker a few different few different times it's one of my favorite extensions for sketchup and what it does is it allows you to bring in things like paths and roads and other things like that into your sketchup models as well as different buildings and so they just rolled out a new version that I wanted to talk a little bit about so you can see how I've already brought in the roads and the lakes and stuff like that as well as some of the satellite imagery which we'll talk about in a little bit but what I wanted to talk about first is their newest or their biggest new feature which is the ability to access their new library of buildings. So before, they were getting all of their building data from OpenStreetMap, which has a great library of different buildings or different building data that they could use to generate buildings inside your model. So for example, if I was to click on a face like this one and click on the button for Buildings Global, what this would do is this would generate buildings inside this surface based on the OpenStreetMap data. And this is great for these bigger buildings because a lot of them were in OpenStreetMap. So you can see how I'm getting a lot of these taller buildings over here, but this whole residential area, there's no buildings for that. There's probably, there's a few different commercial buildings in here that you're not getting as well. Um, but with the new Buildings USA feature, and I will note this is a USA feature, if I am to click on this, and let this update, you can see how I actually get building data for all the houses over here as well. And then some of these smaller buildings got filled in also. So you can see how you get a much larger library of building data um, using this new feature. And I will note that this is still kind of in beta and it's only working in the US, but you can see how it really allows you to access a much larger data set for your buildings, which can be very helpful. So in addition, in some areas, and it doesn't seem to be included in this one, um, it'll also pull in roof data if any of that exists. So like these would be in here as kind of sloped roofs as opposed to flat roofs. You can see how in this area that data didn't exist, but that is in there as a feature. But you can see how this, just being able to pull this different um, map data in here um, and being able to access all of those new buildings is really cool. That's a huge jump in the amount of data that they can get. And they're trying to add data from outside the country as well. Right now, this is only available for Microsoft in the US, I believe, is the limitation. But they're looking into expanding that. But for right now, if you're in the US and you're looking for increased building coverage, they have it here. And so the other function that I really want to talk about is the new color corrected imagery. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn everything off that isn't my image because I've already pulled in some of this data and I wanna talk a little bit about that. So as many of you know, um, you can pull in um, different kinds of updated data or better data for your maps with Placemaker. So if you remember this data, which gets brought in by SketchUp is super low resolution, so it's not really helpful. Um, Placemaker has access to a different library of map data that's much more realistic. So you can see how when I zoom in, um, both of these right here are data that I brought in. And then they also have the ultra high resolution near map data. Um, so that stuff is accurate to like seven centimeters or something like that. But um, one of the new features that they added is the ability to download color corrected map data. So if you look straight up and down right here, these are two different areas where I updated or where I imported map data. And note that when you bring this in, this does use up credits. Um, so you do have a limited amount of that. And part of that is because there's a cost associated with that map data and getting that into the software. Um, but when you import this, you can see how on the left hand side, I use the data called recent. And so recent means you're getting the most recent, most up to date um, data from Digital Globe. Well, the problem with this stuff though is if you zoom in on it, it's, it's 
higher resolution and it's much more detailed than what you get from SketchUp. You can see how it's not color corrected, meaning that it kind of looks washed out. Well, now what you have is you have access to color corrected map data. So you can look at this map data and you can see that it's much more vibrant and interesting than the data that's over here. And so you can access that simply by uh, selecting an area on your map and then clicking the drop down and going to the option for premium. And so when you bring in the premium data, what that does is that brings in this color corrected map data. You can see how this is much more detailed, much more realistic looking, and honestly much more useful than the SketchUp data, but then it also looks a lot better. And that does cost credits as you do that, but you can see with the results that it's really worth doing in areas where you really need that higher resolution stuff. All right, so another thing they've added, and this is actually a city in Wyoming because I wanted to demonstrate um, the amount of new data that you can bring in using this Buildings USA function because uh, it's kind of a smaller city by comparison nationally. Um, but one of the things I want to note while we're doing this, so we'll use this to see if new buildings come in, as well as checking out this other feature, is when you click on this, there's now... Like so first of all, you can see how when you try to bring buildings in in Casper, Wyoming, you don't get a whole lot. There's just not a lot of data up there. However, if you click on the Buildings USA function, and then if you look down on the lower left-hand corner, you can see how there's now a progress bar um, that shows you the progress of the import as it goes. So, and it's kind of a beta feature, so it's not 100% functional, but it's nice having a progress bar to see what your progress is. But the other thing is you can definitely see, so, so that's another new feature is having that progress bar to see how far into this import this really is. Um, but you can see what a difference this makes being able to bring in that, uh, that Buildings USA data, because um, you can see how you've got all this stuff. You can see how there's actually roofs on some of these buildings and everything else. So now you can bring in cities like Casper that you could never really bring in before. So this is a really great update for that. So I'm really excited for having the new data for new locations that you can bring in in the U.S. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something you're interested in? Do you use Placemaker? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.